Do you see that Project Athea trailer yet? No. Oh, man. Uh, so we can watch trailers. Uh, the YouTube's guidelines did change, and I was thinking, especially in lieu of State of Play, it's only like two minutes. Oh, my God, man. It looks so cool. So if, uh, I'd say roll on your end because it's a terrible idea to do it with, with okay. me and Skype right now. Uh, let's try it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Scabbage wagon. That looks so dope, right? Uh, yeah. Beautiful. What a design, man! It it it. Uh, I I thought it was gonna be Parasite Eve, which, please give me <laughs> give me Parasite Eve. <laughs> you've had you've had parasites for years. <laughs> but at oh, bro, you tell me. Um. Uh, but after seeing that, it makes me wonder, like, okay, Square Enix, good. I'm glad you're doing other things, not just, you know, fast-tracking Final Fantasy VII Correct. Remake. And who knows actually how much of a passion project this was on the side for the team, you know, to work in during the off sure. times, things are rendering, I don't know. Um, so it certainly looks beautiful. Um, devotions will be doubted. Kind of weak on the uh, catchphrase there. Uh, I'm not going to lie, it's probably a better way to say that. Maybe it got lost in translation. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but you, get, you got fire wolves. <laughs> You got fire dragons. Why is so much fire? I don't know. Uh, but wolves and dragons are pretty much enough for me. Um, obviously, you, you always want to yeah. wear socks. Um, she didn't get blisters pretty soon, so. Well, what else, What did you? Because during this PlayStation, are we're we're live, right? Oh no. No, I, I'm just kidding. We're live. Let's go. All right, good. <laughs> ah. Too bad this show's friendly. For, I'm trying. I'm trying to be Good. kid friendly here. Ah, I'd, I'd say things that I don't know what. I'm not Mr. Rogers. All right, more warm opening for you folks. I may or may not edit that part because I love the uh, the low budget nature of it. Why not? You eat your, eat your heart out there, show. Fallon. Oh, dude. Uh, I will say this, but Jimmy Fallon, like, I don't know if his producers are uh, and all these late night talk show hosts that aren't used to YouTube, unlike Trevor Noah. Uh, you know, maybe they're being told not to use really awesome equipment to, you know, bring it to the ground, and and maybe be a little more relatable as opposed to. I mean, some people might think I have expensive gear. It's it's not. It's really really not. But it Who looks that, that way. So I, I I've had some people on the podcast that think that what I have is like thousands and thousands of dollars. You're referring worth of to equipment. our aunt. That doesn't count. On the show, not <laughs> audience members. Uh, especially when you see like a mic and a mic arm, people think, "Oh man, that's so expensive!" Like, no, 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 no. This is a yeah, BM eight hundred. I think this you're right. A, a little bit, stuff. and because I think because we never, we don't typically view the podcaster. We, we it's just sort of a black box, and once we see inside that box, we're kind of blown away of what it requires, um, and also what the pricing of it all is. And so I think it require it, it can require a lot. But that a lot doesn't have to come very expensively. No, man, you just need a good operating system or two. Uh, I'm getting another computer, so I'll be I'll be able to have you know two, so I can you know plug into OBS without overworking the computer, yeah. as you know. And uh, that's really when it starts to add up is when you're affording not necessarily a, an expensive console, but it's the closest you get to an, uh, in, in terms of gaming. It's that's really how you optimize uh, your work. And I tried to do uh, a live stream. A live, I did a live react. I thought it was live. I thought it was going well. 
of uh, the PlayStation State of Play. I got my stream key. I was all excited. It was in the nick of time. I went to export it. What? A hunk oh. of garbage. <laughs> Is it white noise? No, it, no, the audio was fine. The video was a true. Well, then think of it as a more as like an ADA friendly kind of uh, reaction. You know, you got to be able to narrate it for people with visual uh, impairments. And, and I was wondering, because I'm I'm, tr- I'm trying to get more uh, people that are unique. I'll put it that way on on the show via Zoom and Skype. You know, how do people that are uh, like Brad Williams, he has an, 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 you know, he's a dwarf, right? His words, that's how he talks about himself. His kid is a dwarf. Like, well, how do you get these people on that have unique, um, unique conditions and address them? Well, for someone that's blind, there's only one way, and that's audio. Audio is how they survive, right? And it's, uh, it's interesting to check out what the, uh, the American Medical Association is doing to inform these people and keep keep them abreast of everything that's going on through their, whether it's information, delivery systems, caretakers, or what are the, the uh, medical social programs that are that have been developed. There's some really interesting technology, and I was reading about a few articles in the health section on Daily Mail, because it's important, and there's a lot of really cool integrations of medical science and uh, mm, special needs sciences uh, going forward, like Unlimited Tomorrow. Do you know what the Unlimited Tomorrow company is? 3D printing limbs. Dude, I want to get them. That would be huge for STEM audiences. Yeah, people in the STEM field, absolutely. Or uh, fabrication as well. Fabrications in STEM, but fabrication design, all the tools you need yeah, you know, like we were talking about with uh, the cartridges and lithium batteries. Like, there's, you know, plastic. Your laptop, the plastic around it is a housing unit. How do you do that? How do you design it? What 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 do you draw from the periodic table of elements in the first place to design a cheap laptop's housing unit? Here's what I know: <laughs> uh, plastics come from petrol and dead dinosaurs, which means plastic dinosaurs are actually made of dead dinosaurs. Food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know the most metal thought ever, <laughs> dude, that's Jesus Christ! Uh, I didn't yeah. know that. That's brutal. That's so right. metal. Are you, are you the show? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. That was a that was a, a nice okay, warm opening. Now, then uh, rather, very cool. welcome back, everybody. Is this is me? Give control. The that's right. And of course, I am your semi okay analyst, Nate. And I'm your pretty good game player, Matt. Yeah, definitely not bad. And uh, this is another episode of Give Me the Controller. And this is episode four, right? Episode four? I think or we're or episode three. three. Revenge of the Sith. Whoops. <laughs> oh, man. Clone Wars. That was so. That made me cry. Anyway. <laughs> That's right. I'll admit it. Where's my camera? Right there? Yeah, I'll cry. Absolutely. I've had way too much caffeine. Uh, But we're two brothers that are too far away, and we're too bored in quarantine, so here we are with another episode of Give Me the Controller. And Matt, what are we playing today? This week we are playing Final Fantasy 2, again, Uh, and... Still, Still, I mean, Final Fantasies are not known for their brevity, and so we probably should have started with a shorter game, but you know, when you get the itch to go <laughs> to the game from your childhood, you know, you kind of want to go all in, and I think that's what we're really doing here, uh, at least on this portion of Game of the Controller, yeah. is look back at where we were, look back on where games were, reflect on where we are now, and importantly, reflect on where games are now. Look at the difference of where it comes, and what kind of lessons we can draw from the past to chart a pathway for the future. You know, uh, during the PlayStation State of Play, I'm going to be saying that we a lot this episode. The Atta- PSP, maybe? <laughs> yeah, the P- P- State... P- P- yeah, PSP, the PSP. Uh, during it, I was thinking about you know our show, what we're going to talk about, how we're going to be addressing it. And the whole time I was thinking, dude, 
Square, Squaresoft, Square Enix, they've come a long way from cartridges needing lithium batteries once they die. And the design of the new PlayStation and uh, the, the, one of the new projects, Project Athea, they have coming out. I am really, really happy that Square has... And, of course, they're not the company that they used to be at all. It happens. But they're still around in some capacity. And they've survived 40, almost 40 years, man. And it's, it, it, it warmed my heart uh, to see uh, a company that means a lot to me from forever ago still around. Yeah, you talk killing. about brand and staying power. I mean, Final Fantasy, Square, Square Enix, you know, they... They're targeted, and to a degree, you know, at least for me, I know I can expect uh, a, a degree of innovation in mechanics. Mm. I can expect a thought-out story. It may not be one that doesn't grab me, but I know it wasn't haphazardly thrown together as an afterthought. You know, I really feel in the Final Fantasies, they do mold a lot of the gameplay around the story. You know, and I do think that story story comes first. Everyone wants to push out mechanics. Oh, give me give me a fancy shooter, or uh, give me a game where I collect bananas. Well, okay, that's all great and fine and good, but <laughs> if you don't make your story your afterthought, you know, make it grab the audience. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how many bananas you want me to collect. If I'm not into collecting bananas, I'm putting it down. And for the record, I don't suggest anybody collect bananas, me, but we that's may have to do a give me the controller of the DK series. I mean, you got Duck on Country, well, you got. Uh, yeah, uh, especially the, the 64 one, which I don't hold as high esteem, probably because I was, you know, at a different point in my life. But the 64 one, I think, allowed for mm -hmm. a better multiplayer experience. I don't know. You, I think it was with the different with the different gorillas available to you, um, different apes. I think it was it was fun to play and explore the different mechanics they brought. And again, I feel like the mechanics very much fit the story. You know, you're an orangutan. Okay, what do you do? You know, tiny. Well, you see the joke, right? The, it, the all the apes and the Donkey Kong family. Hold on, the ape family uh, that they were trying to uh, the the designers and and everyone at uh, Rare, right? Is that is that yeah. correct? Rare. Uh, there, it was such an inclusive game, and what what I what I want what I would like to think is that they were. Sure, it was a sandbox. Sure, a lot of games, and, and you know, not they. There weren't any MMO RPGs really for sixty four. Uh, right? Well, no, because you really couldn't play massive multiplayer online. Sixty four does not have online capabilities. All right, hey, hey, dummy, <laughs> stop can, trying to. We can edit smart. that out. Don't worry. <laughs> no, keep it. <laughs> you do the editing. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I will keep it. Uh, but uh, what what I'm trying to say is. Uh, they were trying to do a lot of things with the with Donkey Kong 64 and seeing how Rare evolved as well, right? Much like how Square evolved. Uh, it's it, and they're still a, they were dissolved and acquired, but the people that had those jobs are still around, so they're having influences throughout gaming. I think it's really fun to see, you know, how mechanics really, really informed not just controllers and triggers, but uh, immersion, right? Because once once you handle that joystick, you know the D pad. Sure, it has a purpose, but once that joystick came in, I remember. I remember when uh, we were comparing it to Super Nintendo we were, when we were kids, and we all agreed that the sixty four controller was far. And that's superior. where it's it's sort of. I feel like they did set the the greatest benchmark. For you know, think of think of an evolutionary family when the 64 controller emerged from the common ancestor with Super Nintendo, um, and then you had Xbox and Dreamcast and PlayStation come to the scene. I really do think they came down from the 64. In particular, I think it really set the stage for okay, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a joystick over here, companion with the D-pad. You know, the fact that the D-pad still exists as a sort of a legacy. It's sort of like the what the the appendix or the spleen of. Uh, your uh, of of the game world, I don't know. I just feel like the sixty four hit it right, kind of the first time, and everything else has just been a subtle iter subtle iteration since then. Um, and you talk about rare in particular. Uh, going back to the software side of it, 
you know, a lot of people know them for their for James Bond, you know, Project Dark, and for me it was always no, they're they're fun family, they're Donkey Kong, and then just going back to Final Fantasy in comparison, uh, they have put out a shooter. You were talking about Parasite Eve earlier, um, but they really do hit the RPG genre well, and I think they're very comfortable in the genre they're they're in, and maybe I'm wrong because I I'm picking and choosing you know what I. I self-select what I play, and I'm not playing a lot of sports games, and maybe Square actually did put out an incredibly awesome uh, football game, and I never took the opportunity to go into it because I'm not selecting for those, and maybe they're not as genre as I think they are. And that's fine, but that maybe proves the point that they are so strong a brand is they can they can silo themselves and not lose market share for try, for trying new things. Boldness in gaming uh, has always paid off, but then again, sometimes it really has paid off. And you only you're, you can only be as bold uh, as you're willing to. You only be as bold as you're willing to be. And I think what what the console gaming specifically, you know, you, uh, you got to shop around. Not, uh, look at what Unreal Engine, uh, Epic Games, like what Epic Games has done. Not only are they applicable consoles but they also have uh, digital properties that you can download and it's much like with streaming you know once you can stream games and you know not need a console because uh, Stadia right Stadia was a digital console it did not go well but it was a bold move and it was at least worth a try and maybe you know one day uh, digital consoles will you won't need the console at all. It, it was a step that may have been hmm. too soon. Well, what is the difference between Steam and a digital console? Ooh. Because you might say the future you're talking about is already here. You know, I mean, any P Xbox, PlayStation, and Sega, and whomever can load their game up onto Steam, and it acts as the console you would have had 15, 20 years ago. Ah. Uh, so uh, do you, should we uh, recap? Uh, I think we always should. You can't expect anybody to have ever watched episodes we've done before. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, right. In case, Where do yeah, we leave off? For the first time. <laughs> For first time viewers? Uh, last time we played Final <laughs> Fantasy II, um, well, we had previously played that part before through fault of mine. Uh, the system didn't save it, so we redid it, and we ended up taking the package from the castle through the caves to the the village of mist unfortunately it was a trojan horse the package was a series of bombs um, meant to eradicate the callers who i also call summoners um, and the speculation by the characters within the game is that this was done to remove any sort of powerful competition um, to the king yeah the a young girl survives um, our hero, our protagonist, accidentally slew her mother and feels nightly beholden to protect her and shelter her. So he absconds with her away from the village to the <laughs> desert town where he is set upon by uh, troops from the castle who want to take him and the caller in. He refuses. He, we fight them. Um, she more or less forgives him and they set off together to go to another castle area um, but we are stopped by an old sage we pick up, we find out Tell that her. the protagonist's love interest came after him but fell ill we need to find a cure, the old man is helping us now get the cure he also needs to go to the castle so we are traveling together, typical RPG fashion, your goals may not align in the long run but in the short term they do and so you travel together so we'll see what happens uh, coming up next Excellent. Uh, I before we begin, do you think like there was a version of uh, brainwashing? A version of brainwashing to whom? Or uh, for Cecil? Oh. Do you think he was you know, brainwashed? Because he's been able to express doubts or moments of pause from the beginning <sighs> to the audience. Yeah. Um, I don't True. think there was a conscious. Um, systematic brainwashing from the castle I think though there was a um, 
pressure put on to Cecil and others to act in accordance to the king, and that itself may be brainwashing. Mm. Um, but yeah, he wasn't able to act on his morals because of higher order morals, that is, adherence to the law and the king. Um, Indeed. But when those vows are questioned, they were reshuffled, he reprioritized, and now he's reprioritizing uh, safety of the girl and um, a challenge to the king. So he's not, mm. I don't think he's advocating anarchy. I don't think he's broken free of a spell. I just think that he has reprioritized and he has seen who he has become. Um, and this dark, you know, this dark mirror has shown him that he isn't who he wants to be and he needs to become that person. He's not who he thought he was. He thought it was something else. Turns out he was a monster. Yeah, that's pretty much right. That's brutal, dude. Like, ugh. Some people uh, end themselves. Yeah, I think any time that our our values are called into question, you reach a pivotal moment. So there's cognitive dissonance, right? And that's, um, if I may butcher it, that's when you can hold two opposing values at the same time and not be in conflict, right? So you can say, I'm not a racist. At the same time, um, you can disparage black people. You know, uh, with everything going on in the world, Black Lives Matter, and 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 all these uh, individuals marching uh, for uh, trans trans rights as well that's occurring, and all this civil unrest. Uh, it is great to Dave Chappelle. He actually released a micro set because he's doing stand up in a wedding pavilion in Ohio, where he is. He lives outside of Cleveland, right? And he he made a, a great point that. He's really, uh, he said, he's really proud of not just the kids, but of everybody getting out there, you know, risking their health, right, their life because of the pandemic, and they're risking, you know, uh, going to jail, especially in, in what's going on in Seattle right now, the the Chaz, right, and uh, I I I haven't finished. Uh, he did like twelve minutes, at least that's what's available on YouTube. And he, he's just dropping truth bombs about uh, social justice and, more importantly, that the Black Lives Matter movement, it's much greater than, you know, uh, having everyone take part. And I, he addresses it in a way that is, it's not, it's not stand-up. It's not a joke. It's just a guy that can talk really well and make it appear that he is... You know, making jokes and really. But it's like a good sermon so you I hear in in mass growing up. You know, the the best sermons don't feel yeah. preachy. Um, you feel truth to them, you feel power to them, um, but they speak to you, and that's the beauty of charisma and good writing and understanding narrative and story, understanding how to package mm. a message so that someone else can understand it. What's the point of a message if no one hears it? You know. And uh, uh, I've been saying this for weeks now you've heard me say it not different tools for different things but uh information has value and how however you want to rank order prioritize the economic value of the economy of words is up to you but uh considering the last of us podcast uh hosted by christian spicer been a fan of him for met for a long time now uh podcaster writer comic director uh check out his 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 comedy albums, uh, all you people out there. Uh, the the episode, the first one, was so well engineered. That's why I got into audio and video engineering. It was a masterpiece, and the conversation was just so fluid. Mind you, I'm really biased because I love The Last of Us. <laughs> but that is that is quality. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a great quality example of how to uh, apply valued information, how to deliver the information really well using a system that is fluid, clear, and simple. I do suggest li uh, listening okay. to it. With, uh, do you, as, uh, are you, before we get into it, are you excited for the new season of F is for Family? No. Oh my god, you need to watch it. Bill Burr You're on this Bill is Burr. I, I'm not in the Bill Burr space that you're in. I mean, the, you got a Bill Burr t-shirt, you got his name tattoo on your butt cheek, that's weird. The point is, he doesn't. What? I, I'm not, I, don't, I, don't, I don't spend my time, you know, following uh, people of the degree you do. So yeah, I don't. I'm not excited. I don't. 
I don't care. You, you, you know that he developed All Things Comedy Podcast Network with Al Magical, right? I don't think I, I, don't think I can All express things... again how little I care. <laughs> You'd be surprised how many jobs that dude, uh, Brad. You'd be, You'd surprised be surprised how little I care about that. Everyone's making jobs, and I don't think the fact that someone is making jobs qualifies them to immunity that we should be following them uh, religiously. I mean, the Ford Motor Company creates jobs. Ford run praise from the Nazis for his anti-Semitic work. Are you going to say that just because someone makes jobs, they should be followed and, and put on a pedestal? No, that's not a good metric of success. Um, I, 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 in, in standpoint podcasting, I would definitely... Uh, as, as, and writing as well, I would definitely say, yeah, it's important to check out these individuals' works and their catalogs and what they have okay. on the horizons and how important it is. So, to as an artist, success. that's different than a job creator. And I don't want to disparage people who create jobs, but again, job creation itself is not a reason for me to spend my time looking into something. I, I do suggest that everyone go check out F's for Family. It's going to be a great season. I'm very or excited. Or for Counterpoint, to check don't because you don't care. Ah, uh, no, nah, you should. Don't. I don't <laughs> it's care. Important. He's going to edit this out. He's going to silence me. <laughs> he heard people. Yeah, you're. Dude, you're going to cancel. <laughs> you're going to cancel me? <laughs> we have decided yeah, to yeah. drop the "Give Me the Controller" label from our platform as it does no longer represent the views of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Bill, man, because uh, uh, and I'll, I'll finish up with this uh, one of his one of the greatest comedic minds that unfortunately he passed, Patrice O'Neill. Um, they were great friends, and and he and Bill and and Al uh, through the All Things Comedy Podcast Network uh, company, they've been able to get a lot of funds redirected to a lot of charities that Patrice cared about. Uh, unfortunately, he passed and very untimely and has been really able to assist uh, black Americans in New York, Brooklyn, and throughout the state of uh, New York. Uh, and not just not just artists, writers, comics, but you know, uh, the, the everyday individual. So it's, uh, with considering the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, uh, Nia, Bill's wife, uh, she's black, she's been able to kind of use the uh, his, his clout as well to do a lot of uh, great things with social justice. and. It's too bad Patrice died, but there's uh, per your point, you're absolutely right. You know, I, I I take a lot of time, mind you, it's kind of my job to know what people are up to, but uh, it's easy to get caught up in the uh, lo loving something so much that it it's, uh, the information is valuable to you, yeah, but how valuable is it to other individuals? And that's that's why I I love podcasting. Okay, well. Okay, and here's our file with the old guy. Here's our here's our bad file. Ooh. And if we ever want to pick it up again because we made some kind of mistake, well, we can always start that. Right, or just like a choice, like of a, with a character that. We Thankfully, don't like. not as problematic in these games. You obviously have a less less agency in deciding the direction of your characters. I mean, with some stats, you can do that. Right. You know, you 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 look at their menu here, and you got. I don't hear the audio. From That's alright. We talked about that. So yeah, you have defense, defense chance, night defense, and there are some items in this game that can impact those values and variables. Um, but the over on the overall performance of the game, or even arc of the character, that wouldn't have any impact. All right, I got a weapon. Um, a hey, nice there ride. you go. We'll go ahead. I remember when I fr when you first equipped that. I was always on the I was always on the fence about who to oh. give it to because Rydia dies so easily, <laughs> and Tella has more of an arsenal. With exactly. The, so the I figure, magic. if nothing else, she can be my she can be fairly um, damage weapon damage output. He can be my magic damage output. All right. Well, here we are. We were really close last time to it. Mm -hmm. Is the desktop audio and OBS no. muted? Yes. Yes, it is. Well, speaking of, um, all right. Let's see what happens. Wait, actually, there is. Oh, what was that way? We can use item. Like you can actually like use the item. On on the dead. How, what that was like. Uh, 
I believe that. Let's see. Go to item. Hold on. And when you when you make the selection, I think shouldn't, shouldn't you be able to select one? Uh, well, I think it has yeah, to be in. I think item might have to be in the inventory, and the ice rod ice rod was not. Oh. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, never mind. I hear it a little bit, so I wonder if it's just turned down on your end. Oh man, <laughs> what a tease! <laughs> I thought I don't know why I thought that was the door that would take us right there. Obviously, it wouldn't. Oh yeah, yeah, you go up. Jeez, there you go. Someone... Ooh, what does shadow do? Nothing. I don't okay. know. <laughs> there you go, ice rod. Bob up. Oh, sweet. Wow. So Shadow may, may not may work on the dead. dead. That's a fair point. That's so creepy. <laughs> what are the implications there? Oh, my God. Uh, one thing is, as I get older, I, I notice more and more that I think about, like, not not necessarily, uh, more, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not much of a moral relativist. That's uh, moral, moral relativism is, is deadly, but I try to consider a lot of things and try not to be overly emotional, but I definitely lean that way. Uh, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just, you know, uh, we were watching the end of Clone Wars uh, because we were getting ready for the ATX uh, festival. It's an uh, American television uh, in, uh, festival okay. in Austin. And, and the Mandalorian had a uh, panel. So to prepare for, I, uh, Jordan, excuse me, my wife and I went back and uh, watched Mandalorian and the end of Clone Wars because because uh, there Ezra Ezra Bridger's coming back uh, and and the Disney Plus universe. Uh, so Rex is coming back in the Disney Plus universe. All these people are that that were in Clone Wars and Rebels. I started crying at the. Uh, with in the last two episodes of uh, Clone Wars because it just felt so relevant to now and just feel so helpless. But that's the way I gotta get out and vote, right? Uh, yeah. I'm always a big fan of voting. Vote early, vote often, as, as our dad would say. That's right. Vote early, vote often. By often we mean not more than once a day. Just a, 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 every election <laughs> there is. So I just want to put it out there. We are not advocating right. voter fraud. Ah, oh, look, a secret passageway no. here. Somehow, as a kid, what, was there this easy to see when we were kids? No. Nah. Or it was, and we well, were done. Well, tell us we found it, to be honest. I don't think we would have, like, oh, hey, I'm going to try and go through this wall and this wall only. Oh, look, it worked. Well, I mean, not that's not, not necessarily <laughs> untrue. That's not necessarily true. Because I remember grinding and spending far too many hours working uh playing uh final fantasy 2 specifically even 7 i would just like oh maybe it's like 2 and you can go through walls clearly which uh -oh. that's not the case do it's... i have a remedy uh no i, w I wanted to call I it asuna what... wasn't that what and... the name of it in final fantasy 8 isuna e s u n a <laughs> yes still a frog good me good memory <laughs> <laughs> all I get, have five of these. Right. Give him a hammer. A frog with a hammer? What do you, what do you think? Yeah, what do you a think frog, exactly? dude. <laughs> some, uh, some Marvel input there. Uh, are you excited for the Marvel game coming out? Avengers no. Assemble? It looks so oh. fun. And there, there's an Iron Man VR coming out as well. And that looks... So terrifying to play because <laughs> that... no, I actually thought, um, so I saw some footage recently of a of a canned um, Marvel game that was kind of built mechanically as similar to um, uh, yes. Left 4 Dead, and I thought that actually looked incredibly exciting. Um, so yes, I, I know what you're talking about. I I read and I watch every news article that that is important to my scope of practice. So I'm full of information yeah, all full the time. After, after that's right. After this PlayStation State of Play, man, I was 
man, I cannot believe what is going to be occurring with the gaming now. We're we're on the precipice of Uncanny Valley, and uh, Jordan and I were doing a watch through of God of War Four. I love love the God of War series, but I love this this uh, the latest release the most because not only are they using Unreal Engine Four. But there's a, a new skin that is 4K at 60 frames per second. Kratos looks real. Oh. Yeah, I, his hair looks real. His skin, even though he's where he's he's covered in the ashes of his children and his dead wife, <laughs> his skin looks real. Atreus, uh, his son looks real. Uh, man, I, I to see where gaming is, to where it all where it, where it comes from, 8 bit, 16 bit. Right, <laughs> yeah, all these. Like, and there was that. Wow. What was There's... it? Um, what, some game magazine back in the day. Um, it showed like the evolution of all the Final Fantasy characters, and it was like, what are their heads used for? And it was, you know, head used for bashing rocks because if you look at the character right here. It's the head is like easily half their body, and it wasn't really until yeah. Final Fantasy VIII um, that they became sort of fully realized as um, fairly normal-looking humans. A you know, polygonish looking, you know, a lot of, a lot of, a lot, a lot of hexagons, a lot of octagons, because the, the triangles necessarily haven't been uh, reduced to time, like we, what we saw with UE five uh, uh, conference. You know, all those billions of triangles. You know, with, with just steadily and throughout time, been able to have more than a little time for us. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, I think fire works well on them, but oh, he doesn't have fire magic, so. They, Rydia, that's cool. They, uh, Rydia and Tella have complementary magic, even if they're both black magic. That's nice. It kind of shows the diversity mm. of magic that's out here. Oh, and Cecil is entirely useless. Yeah, aren't they like, yeah, they're jellies, yeah. right? I love jelly. I can't have jelly. Oh, you can't, oh, you can't, you can't multiple psych. There's no psych all. Oh, never mind. She doesn't have fire. He has fire. Oh, okay. Hit it. So light, light them yeah, up. Yeah, it didn't do so much. I think. Well, I don't know. I, I don't remember what the damage up it was. Boom. There you go. At least they're showering me with items. I should probably stop using magic because. Yeah, you're gonna run out of magic points, and you gotta still fight that uh, ant lion. That av that avatar last airbender uh, creature. <laughs> Where did they get Antlion from? Uh, let me pull up Google Chrome for you real quick. I would imagine... Because it is a, a, an actual mythical creature for some reason. I don't know. Uh, let me look up the genesis of the Antlion. Please. Okay. okay I would imagine the etymology is probably Greek, but I'll... Instead of wildly speculating, mate, why don't you just wait till you know? There you go. Right. <laughs> I got my other, so now I have a little bit of uh, Woo! protection. Yeah, you better save that, buddy. Yeah, I'm sort of a hoarder when it comes to these things. I mean, it's currency, right? It's it, it's you have, you have to pay things in order to keep the game I mean, going. Currency is only good so, and when you use it. You know, if you spend your whole game never using another, was it really ever good currency? Right, or were you just too chicken to, uh, you know, spend spend it and and use chicken, it? I say hard mode. Hard <laughs> mode. You know, based upon The Last of Us Two and considering all the reviews that are coming out today, uh, like, choosing div I don't I hate playing a game on hard, but if it's something I love and I, and I'm gonna spend far too much time with it, then uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to play it on that's... hard. And I've... Yeah, remember that Spider-Man game good. I tried to play on hard? Uh, Which one? It was on PlayStation. Oh, that that was, it was forever a, ago. <laughs> with Galactus! The, the Mighty Thor! <laughs> Alright, so I'm looking at Antlion's uh, Antlion, Insect. Uh, this according to Britannica Analytica. Uh, those of you who don't know what Analytica means, you are definitely <laughs> on the wrong channel. 
<laughs> Antlion. <laughs> I'm not saying they're stupid. I'm just like, eh. I might use some terms like metadata, transitive data, that that might go way over someone's head. Uh, according to Britannica, Antlion family, uh, Meyer, uh, Melion, uh, Tidae, any of a group of insects or Neuroptera that are named for the predatory nature of the larva, which trap ants and other small insects in pits dug into the ground. Antlions are found throughout the world, primarily in dry, sandy regions. So it's a, it's a real creature. Uh, I'm looking at a larval ant lion, and Squares, Square did a really good job uh, actually designing the huh. ant lion. Because it looks like a full-grown ant lion that's about to kill you to protect oh, their young. <laughs> the ant lion larva digs a funnel-shaped pit from 2.5 to 5 centimeters, 1 to 2 inches, deep and 2.5 to 7.5 centimeters, 1 to 3 inches, wide at the edge, by using its oval, sandy gray abdomen as a plow and heaping the loosened particles on its large square head and throwing them clear of the pit. When the pit you know, don't fall into the pit, Matt. When the pit is completed, the lar the larva buries itself so that only its jaws, uh, its only its jaws protrude. Any small insect that ventures over the edge of the sandy pit slips to the bottom and is seized by the sickle-like jaws of the ant lion. Oh my God! After sucking the contents of its victim, the ant lion throws the empty sk oh my God empty skin out of the pit of some metal. The larva of certain species, the spotted winged antlion, uh, Dendrolion, obs uh, Dendrolion obsoletus. Oh my God, that's the most metal Latin name I've ever heard. Uh, of certain species do not make a pit, but seize passing prey from a hiding well, place. Well, thankfully they're not man-sized. Dendrolion obsoletus. Whoa. That's creepy, dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, so I'll give it a chance here to, to buckle up. Yeah, where are we? And we get to heal. Uh, Cecil got a new weapon. So, great news there. It's called Darkness. So, embracing the, embracing the shadow even further, even though I'm trying to distance myself from the king. Well, it's like the force. You know, the dark side of the force is full of useful tools. You know, the, the, the means do not define, you know, the character, but the means are still dark nonetheless. Oh, oh, all right. I guess I can swim in full plate. That's pretty cool. Here we go. I'm not swimming, actually. I'm falling. Yeah, I, I always throw myself over a waterfall when I can't see the That's bottom. That's the safest way to do it. <laughs> Bro. Oh, fuck that. Oh, sorry, kids. That's an alligator. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That's a dinosaur. There's dinosaurs what in this game? For the world, you know, did they go through a, uh, a cataclysm? Did a meteor hit the Yucatan Peninsula? Did they turn, <laughs> they turn into birds? <laughs> right? What, what's, what's the evolutionary theory applicable to Final Fantasy I kind of Fantasy feel like if two? that happened in this world, they already had their Final Fantasy. You know? I mean, that's, that's the plot of other games, you know? When, mm -hmm. when a rock falls onto your planet to destroy it, that's the whole story. So if this world already experienced that, <laughs> you know, this is like the second fantasy. Well, per your point, you know the ending of Final Fantasy VII, the original ending of the 97 release, where it's Red 13 and his family looking at yeah. Midgard? Well, apparently, that's a bad ending. That means... At all the humans or, died. Yes, essentially, I suppose it could mean that. At least, at the very least, they don't live there anymore. According to the writers, no, uh, all humans died. Every single human died. Was it like a disease? Was uh, I, I, I don't know. But in the remake, they're trying. They're backdoor explaining uh, it. Okay, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe it's decided. Let's all leave Midgard and ignore any talk about all the humans dying. Hence the sequel nature of I mean, was, the remake. To be fair, I would have been okay if that was the way the story was going. I don't think. Don't make a remake just so you can re-explain the ending of Final Fantasy VII. 
right? That's, that's not worth it for that reason. Uh, there could be other good reasons to do it. Fine, I, I embrace that. But the ending was satisfied me enough that I didn't need um, that. Well, I, I, I uh, don't, you know me, I, I love information and I love the, whether it's a person or uh, a studio or a, a news outlet, you know, or a conference, but whatever the, wherever it's coming from, the information, I love, you know, learning as much as I can about it, you know, and it's, the Final Fantasy series are so well written that I want to understand much like the Russo brothers, right? I, I love Anthony, what Anthony and Joe have done. Now, considering that they're, you know, they did Deadly Class uh, right after they did uh, finished with Marvel, and then they were also working on Extraction, which was a masterpiece of an action film directed by one of the stunt people from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Sam Hargrave. Uh, I'm all about the Russos. I want to know everything they're thinking, how they think, how they approach, uh, you know, writing. Uh, uh, and it's, I don't know if that's obsessive necessarily, but I just want to know how you get, to, you know, all right, that place that you want to end up, well, how do you get yeah, there? Sure. What do you have to do? And so, which is why I'm such a big fan of Bill Burr, because he's such an amazing writer. That, that guy, you know, uh, sure, sure, it may be stand-up or a joke, but in order to get to that punchline and in order to be, to be well developed, how do you design that? Oh, Go. <laughs> That's really hard. Yeah. All right. Um, These little dudes. Pause it, pause it, <laughs> I, I want to hear what say. Kenzie just called me. Okay. That pause button is nice, uh, huh? Uh, it is. Did I pause it or stop it? I, I think you paused it. <laughs> no, it's still recording because. Okay, yes, tiny mages. Yes. Uh, tiny mage. What if there is? What if Tell is just a big mage? You know, I don't want to be the one to. Yeah, right. That's that's kind of like species, don't you think? But hey, if they identify as tiny mage, I'm not. I don't want to take that from them. Right. Exactly. I was about to say. Well, I mean, squares. Clear. They definitely have beats of systemic racism. You know, they waited forever to have a playable black yeah. character. So I don't think they were culturally sensitive to individuals that might be uh, quote-unquote tall is what we'd be considered by people that were that are, that are born with uh, conditions. What, what happened to uh, Cecil here? Did he... I think he got rocked. <laughs> rocked his world? Yeah, look at him, dude. He looks like, like he has over. concussion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how I look when I'm hungover. <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, what, how's your mead uh, and all that going? Good. So I had a batch that I let the raisins in for longer than I would have liked. It kind of gave it a, a quite of a uh -oh. whiny taste. Um, and Kenzie actually quite enjoyed sure. it. So she doesn't like it when it's sweet so much, but she enjoyed this um, wine iteration. So um, I'm okay with that. She gets utility out of it. So... Um, but I have a new batch, a new, a new gallon coming that I'll take the raisins out um, sooner. Nice. It will be a sweeter batch. Um, I I like the uh, whenever wine has a raisiny taste, as if it's not too raisiny. I don't mind it. Sometimes I really like it, especially with a Pinot or even a Syrah. Ooh, we got our Boleto shit in today. Ooh. So, uh, wineries are open for tasting again. You don't have to buy food. I think... Uh, we're going to go to a few of our clubs. Uh, wait, how many clubs do we have now? <laughs> only, only. I think we only have only two or three, but they're all uh, industry, so it's super cheap. Be and I've I've missed mm -hmm. tasting so much. I didn't realize how much I how much I enjoy the uh, the community. I can only imagine how much because uh, you guys enjoyed uh, tasting and 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 more importantly wine knowledge together and being able to do uh, it yeah, together. Enough to take the BART and the train <laughs> and rent a car to go do it. Yeah, right. So for people that don't know, uh, when Matt Kinsey lived in, uh, I was going to say Oregon, uh, Oakland, <laughs> uh, and, and, and in order to make Oakland a little cheaper, you know, maybe 
not having a car payment is kind of nice. So you guys would take uh, Bart uh, to the bus it wasn't to the Golden Gate. Golden Gate. You know, the apartment we lived in is a suite. There was no dedicated parking, which I am okay with, but it did mean that we right. had to move the car right. every two hours, and that got cumbersome. Yep. So um, it was right. It, it just made, and the fact that my my job was yeah, a short little train ride away. Kenzie could work from home, but um, it made it easy. That's that's a really good point. Um, because it, it's not that you couldn't afford it; it's just that you know affording the time and the headache that, that the, a different yeah. kind of economy, sure, not monetary, but man, it's a real pain to have to yeah. move your car and that often. Day, we just we didn't need it to go anywhere, so yeah, it became it became expensive. Wait, why are we why are we encumbering this expense when we don't need to? And when and. And how do you get to the North Bay, you know, wine country, Sonoma County? It's really easy if you don't mind train travel or, and, and hopping on a bus for a second to get over to San Rafael to hop on uh, the smart train to get into yep. Santa Rosa. Hey, how's, the, how's the status of the train right now? Uh, there, it's not going well. Unfortunately, people that didn't understand a bill that was going to fund the train for the next 30 years... Uh, it, the bill was turned down, so the smart train, Cinema Marin Rapid Transit, rail, excuse me, Rail Transit. Sorry, uh, it's not looking great for now because for being a commuter train, it's still pretty expensive. Which you know, if, if people, you know that that uh, I'm not, my, I, I don't know near as much about economics as I, as I should, but macroeconomics poverty is a cornerstone of that right and there's a lot of there's a lot of people that are have you know they have trouble paying their rent it's, it's so expensive here now in Sonoma County how are you going to have those people that are already struggling use a service sure it's more convenient but that convenience is a little more expensive than they can afford of course they're going to use the bus and ride a bike for a little longer than they would they would prefer because they could save however many dollars a quarter oh. Yeah, that's right. Octo this is Octo oh shoot. Well, that's weird. <laughs> at least we can be polite, right? All right, all right. All yeah, so right. Let's look at the tentacles here. What am I doing? There's only. You gotta take out oh, each only, tentacle. Oh, only if I remember right, correctly. So I don't have too much efficacy in what that's gonna be. Yeah, use that Chocobo, Chocobo. dude. So we're talking about drinking wine now. What were we drinking back in the day, Nate? When we were kids? Yeah. Oh. I'm trying to remember. Squirt. Uh, remember that? that? That was mom's drink. That great grapefruit. I loved uh, squirt. It's probably because I love mom more, Matt. <laughs> uh, I was a bit kind of root beer. So. That's right. Dad's root beer. That's right. I remember that. Thank you for the refreshing me. I actually, you know, um, we were members at a vodka at a distillery in Sonoma, and your Gloria Ferrer, uh, for people that know it, uh, for quite a while, and they had this great root beer, and all their liquors, all the spirits that they had in house paired. Uh, there was a few that paired mm. perfectly with it. Oh my God, dude! It's I love soda. Don't get me wrong. I I I I don't like soda pop too much, but I love soda pop that is. You know, made in house, and there's I, you can kind of you know what's in it, and you, and you can see how it's made, so it feels a little healthier, even though it's probably not healthy for you at all. There. Oh, I'm informed, therefore, you know, I'm making good choices. Right? It's oh, this this is transitive data and metadata. That's right, but buddy, it's sugar. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's gonna hurt you. Summer days with the place at the Super Nintendo that I first had warm milk and cereal. And uh, after whoa, the day, and, uh, not not great. Um, didn't put me to sleep, but you know you you and our older brother were still sleeping. And uh, this like, well, why not? Yeah. You know, uh, I when I, when I spoke to Uncle Matt, uh, he mentioned you know uh, Eastern Oregon uh, people that 
need a little more reference on on northeastern Oregon, Wallaba County, Enterprise, Joseph, more closer to Idaho. Uh, Uncle Matt says he just comes from Idaho because people have no idea <laughs> unless you've been around Oregon and around the Tri Cities area in Washington and uh, around uh, uh, north uh, northeast Idaho. Boom. There, dude. Boom. That was quick, dude. He was, he got the, like a boss. Upgrade. He's been he's been slaying. I believe. Hey, 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 hey! Wow, that's a terrible, terrible dad joke. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I will be. Don't worry, I will be. Yeah. All right, let's heal it up. Although I hate to waste a ten. If I if I'm gonna get a free heal somewhere else, oh well. So I haven't really spent any time grinding, and I want to say that that boss fight wasn't particularly onerous. Obviously, I was experiencing some MP depletion, but I had others to back me up. Um, so. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I feel like I was still on firm standing, so not much grinding needed so far. Not till you get uh, before oh, when when oh, Cecil. Oh, yes, I forgot. When his character changes, what's that? Oh, yeah. You Whoa! Think, oh my gosh, you're about to go to this little castle in the desert, and all of a sudden, boom. Now, I remember you could go down there. Oh. Because usually, as soon as you leave a place, as soon as you step off a place, you leave it for, aha, you leave it for good. But here, they expanded the map. Yeah, buddy. Sure. Sure. All right. Oh, dude. Uh, he was blinded by the explosions? So, um, earlier in the cave, you know, we had that secret passageway which was highlighted to a degree, right? It, you could tell there was something there on the wall. Now we're given a passageway and you can't, but you're primed to know that, hey, wait a minute, sometimes, sometimes I can actually go outside the walls. And this is, this is that kind mm -hmm. of case. So it was nice of them to, to, to queue it up for us. I wonder what that's called uh, for uh, RPG design. I don't know. I mean, it's, I guess you're, you're slowly introducing me to a concept and then allowing me a space to test that concept, to test my theories. Mm. But yeah, if I was a more informed game designer, I, I might know. Okay, well, we'll give Tell the crossbow since I, mean, I don't have him attack anyway. I'm going to hold off on that. I'm going to hold off on that. Maybe, maybe give him some uh, armor for his head. I do like that uh, when when you equip things because the characters are so stylized, you know that uh, if, if they, it doesn't change how they look because he would look kind of silly with <laughs> with, with a hat. I actually enjoy games <laughs> where you could see the changes reflected on on them. It made it seem like your choices yes. actually had value. Now, of course, I, rep I realize, oh my gosh, that's so many, so much more art you have to make. Yeah. And it's a lot more time and jobs too. And if your studio does really just doesn't have the money for it, that it's it's a misallocation yeah, so of funds. If I was doing this an RPG maker, for instance, I could say I would give each item, you know, a, a unique designation, which it probably has. At least each set, so like leather, would be a different um, variable than a cap, for instance. And then I would say it have to each time. <clears throat> I, I check my variables, I say, okay, if Cecil's wearing a cap, call up this image. Oh, but wait, if Cecil's wearing a cap and a shield, okay, now I have to call up this image. And it just, it would be, it would be hard to do because in RPG Maker, the sprites aren't, I don't know how you would do just a head sprite and then just a body sprite and then just a boot sprite. It would be incredibly difficult to do, I think, and yeah, not, not worth the time in it. Which makes you wonder with uh, how they take the crystal already. Oh no! Yeah, right. You, did did they like descend? Like what is it like? Navy yeah. seals? Like, like do they do they drop and just pillage and plunder and bounce real quick? Was there magic? Oh, ah, no. Anna. Uh, is he wearing heels? I think he's wearing 
That's brutal. A healed boot, probably. Oh, poor Eddie. Jesus Christ. Swindler. You spoony bod! <laughs> oh, man. Dude, his wife hey, just died. Hey, Maybe... Hey! Hey! hey. Very horrible thing that can be when someone's wife dies, but that is probably the most famous line in Final Fantasy history. Um, <laughs> it's one of my top five. Let's see. Other top line in this game would be... Uh, Sid says it when he takes you to his ship. We'll get to that one later. Don't say it. That's true, huh? I think it's a good, a funny line. Anyway, this is obviously a very devastating fight uh -huh. here. Poor guy. Oh, she's not dead. And you ah. have to. Oh, thank God. She's knocked out. Maybe check for a pulse, Tella. Just because I said, <laughs> uh, doesn't mean I'm dead. <laughs> Guys is a bard. See, she married up. Oh wow! Golbez. Sorry. Yep. Last time he's mentioned with barons. Yes, he is, and he's one of the bigs. Oh man. Oh, so she's dying. Dude, that's brutal. Obviously, he heavy things Damn. happening in the game already. Oof. That's brutal, dude. Oh man, he's out for blood. Ooh. You know, just as quickly as he come, he's gone. He's gone. Wow. Whew. And then the little girl steps up here. Jesus. Nice. Truly wonderful, the mind of a child is. <laughs> Do you think, does Cecil ever come clean? Like, hey, I, I killed her, her family. Oh. Uh, I think it's maybe off screen. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, the writing here, not very good. Yeah. That's strong. I am Cecil. I am looking for the same Right, like, oh, Jesus, that's some <laughs> '90s exhibition well, right saying, there. You know, if, if dialogue is their, your, the final paint job you put on the game, I mean, yeah, we're still playing it, obviously, because we like the story, and the mechanics, and, in, and particularly for us, it harkens back to a different time when this dialogue was more acceptable. Um, but I wouldn't, ex I wouldn't last long in this game if I was playing it for the first time nowadays. I think. Well, that's why uh, you played the updated version that was released in uh, 2010 because it's uh, the better narrative, better written, more fluid, and you get the cutscenes. You know, the, half the reason Play any game. that Square Enix, you know, became what it is now is because they uh, they realized that they could expand all the universes that did really well when they were released. So you get, you know, Final Fantasy IV was massively expanded. Uh, Final Fantasy VII became a, one of the world's most important gaming franchises. And, you know, that treatment duplicate that success. Here we go. Dope. Free from combat. Now you can actually grind if you want. Grind if you want to, you can grind. No, wait a minute. <laughs> Don't do that, kids. <laughs> Don't bump and grind just because you want to. Is too far to the east? Oh, yeah. That's too far. 
Yeah, that's uh, where you. Uh, That's where you become the paladin. Oh, here's the, here it is. All right, how's everybody's health is full? Thank you very much. I appreciate that game. Uh, that's right. I didn't give him. See, I didn't give him the bow. Aha, uh aha. -huh. Uh -huh. yep. And he has his wow. herbs he uses. But I wish I don't oh, barred barred body armor. Okay. You know, based upon uh, his what's assigned to him, you can definitely see why he would bounce and elope with this young lady. You mean a harp? Yeah, because he plays her music, so they probably get close, right? And you know, I I can't count on my hands how many times I've wooed ladies yeah, with, yeah. you know, cause I I can shred, right? I, I'm amazing at guitar, yeah. right? So that I. I excuse you. <laughs> you haven't heard me play I, in a okay, while. Did you get worse? <laughs> I, I got uh, better over the I past still, couple years. Still good. I'm great. Okay, new ability sir. here, singing. I'm not sure what effect it does. Lullaby. Okay. What? Oh, so imagine they're sleeping. I don't see any indication that it had it, that it worked. So is that like magic? Oh, it doesn't take any MP. Which is great. So it's we call it a supernatural ability in Dungeon Dragons terms. You know, something you... So he, he he's a he's a mutant. Yeah, let's say that. I I will. He is a mutant. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> That's wrong. crazy. Yeah. Well, but at mutants mutants <laughs> mutations are something you're born with. I don't think he was born. Well, obviously he was born with the ability to use his voice, but typically bards are people who are trained, um, like a bard at college. In Skyrim, but that's nuts, dude. Does have. I wish. Well, if you can sing someone to sleep, I, I wonder how scientifically you measure that. What 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 is occurring neur neurologically, the neuroscience of the individual's brain? What's what is occurring to make someone yeah, right. fall so asleep? I, I would, if yeah, you're looking, check their you know, brain patterns. I'm telling you, man. I listened to uh, Dr. Heather Berlin. She appears on uh, Neil, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast network, Star Talk, pretty regularly. And, I, and I've checked out her, her quite a few of her essays, articles, and uh, video content. She has some really interesting research on what's occurring and, uh, with your brain when there's music or uh, rhythms or something that, you know, the, the brain waves that are, that the, informa the delivery system of information. There's some really interesting okay. research on it. Um, so I like that he can hit with his weapon. I wonder if his weapon has any special effects, like ice does. Let's check it out. It is not. It is not very effective. Ooh, dream weaver. I believe you can get me through the night. What like, what's he <laughs> Is he singing Journey? Like, <laughs> He's singing Zelda's Lullaby. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> I'll let you play that one if you want. Oh, man, that's a fun one. Uh, uh, I was I was trying to figure out what I would like to play, and I feel, uh, there's just so many titles. From you. you definitely spent more time with this game as a, as a kid than I did. Oh no! I don't want. It. I don't need to play it. I spent far too much time with it. Where am I? I was, I was invisible for a minute. Uh oh, creams. Mm. Oh. Boston cream pies. Da 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 da. da. She's all right. She's all right. She's all right. <laughs> Bleep it out. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh, he can hide too. I forgot that about him. He's a spoony he bard. Spoony. And if your backstory here, he, okay, he's a rich kid, you know, from the castle to the north. He's he's like the kid that's hiding under his blankets. Like you can't see me, so you can't hurt me. Like no, now what are you doing? Oh, he hides automatically when his health is low. I like that. He's full of tricks. That's a cool. Yeah. That's a cool mechanic. Okay, ice not very effective. Oh, I should. This isn't very effective either. He's got to show himself. 
Oh man, I could. I'm, apparently, I'm in a singing mood because if, if you've seen Frozen two, show yourself. I love that song. That soundtrack. Oof, it's good. It's a good soundtrack. Especially into the unknown. Oh my god, I would love to put that soundtrack over this game with Riddy. Uh, she's the she's your main character. She's your Ellie, right? Cecil is clearly, clearly Joel, or it's you know maybe Last of Us borrowed a little from that. Uh, but if you were to develop this into a series, I was thinking about it. Riddia, man, she's your focus because she's the linchpin. She's the reason all this goes down. And I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, I mean, what? You're right. She definitely gives a wake-up call to Cecil. Um, but I don't think she goes to a character change necessarily as right. Cecil does. That's a good point. Yeah, his his character development, you know, from this moral relativist, or at least turning away and closing his, you know. Like, eh, no, no, no. No, I'm just, just following orders. Like all these cops that are beating people during the protests. Just follow your orders. It, it, it's, uh, it, it's conflicting. And then when, when following his orders gets the best of him, he realizes, oh, no. Yeah. So I think he has a powerful narrative. But, again, she is the catalyst. And so she deserves... And, yeah, you don't you don't want her to be what's called a save the cat moment, right? Where oh, he did something good, he saved this little girl. Mm-hmm. She needs to be more than that. Indeed, uh, and it's not a scrappy dog story either. Scrappy do. Scrappy dog okay. story, or like sha- or is it shaggy dog story? <laughs> shaggy, scrappy. I might. Uh, either way, it's it uh, the Big Lebowski. Uh, Eric Voss from New York Rockstars. He did, he uh, did a breakdown of Ant Man and the Wasp, and Ant Man and the Wasp really borrows from the Big Lebowski because it's kind of a, kind of like a shaggy dog, sh- shaggy dog story, uh, and it's it was really fascinating the the literary tools that were utilized. So and it's really interesting because there also is the the cat is dead tool, right? The cat is dead, but it's not dead. And that I'm I'm not that good of a writer to implement that strategy, but it's really fascinating. The, oh. So the basilisk. All right, all right. All your Harry Potter fans. Hopefully, hopefully you're not fans of J.K. Rowling because she's a horrible person. And a, yeah, dude, she's a turf. Trans exclusionary radical feminist. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, when you read the uh, she she said some really dumb things on Twitter and now she's being lit up uh, but the basilisk uh, I, I prefer that design yeah, in Harry Potter me too you know, what's, you know why it's not a basilisk in Harry Potter because it's a snake you know how we you know how we know it's a snake because <laughs> Harry can talk to it and hear it that's how we know it's a snake and not a basilisk <sighs> this is a really, really big nah, plot this hole. Is, the whole movie <laughs> falls apart. <laughs> right there. Because. But why is it called the Why is it called the basilisk? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it just like a really big snake? Because Harry can talk to snakes. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> so you wanted a magical word for a snake, didn't you? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan George, thank you, buddy. That guy inspired generations of jokes. One generation so far. Right. Oh, he'll never stop what doing that. He better better not. Uh, what are your thoughts on Tenet? Have you have you been keeping up on the uh, press coverage? You could probably understand. No, uh, but my thoughts are excitement and anticipation and standards. Uh, I think when I think of when I think of Nolan, I think yeah, this movie is going to be a high standing movie. When I think of Square, you know, I think it's going to be is a degree of production value, um, and not just production right. value and and narrative development, but um, other movies don't bring to the table. Um, but I expect 
you know, from a Christopher Nolan movie. It's a movie I'd go, I'd go, I like to go see in theaters. Although I, I can't think of the last Christopher Nolan movie I did see in theaters. It was probably a Batman movie. No, sorry, it was Interstellar. Um, that movie, oh my God, that what an ending! What a whole, what a whole movie! Beautiful yeah, storytelling. Storytelling. That's what I want. Even in a Batman, you know, it's for him. I like that that you know those those plot those um, the sets, the art pieces. Yeah, they're important, but he can tell a good story with art pieces that other people may disparage. Oh, it's Batman. You can't tell a good story with Batman. Actually, you can tell quite a meaningful story with Batman. If you explore yeah. other areas uh, of Batman, such as his villains, the city, the setting, the city. Yeah, uh, all the all the minor characters like Flass, you know, crooked cops that contribute short in a small micro capacity, but without those beats you don't really get the fully fleshed out uh, mm -hmm. world building that Christopher Nolan achieves through not just featuring a character but the dialogue of the character and that's uh, Tenet is technically a sequel it's in the same universe as Inception uh, the Robert Pattinson's character is uh, the the idea the rumor mill it's James and Philippa uh, uh, Cobb's children are the agents that uh, John David Washington oh. is working with. That would be interesting. Yeah. And I love John David Washington. I watch Ballers, the HBO property that it's bred. You know, Dwayne Johnson, he gets everybody jobs whenever he's yeah. attached to anything. And the writing is incredible. Really, It's a really, really good insight to not, not just sports, but sports management and a lot of overhead and how agencies work. You know, and and uh, after seeing him in Black Klansman and what he and Spike Lee are capable of together, uh, that uh, with Adam Driver as well, and that was a powerhouse of a film. And he got to do a great job as Ron Stallworth, uh, and you know, also do justice to the real individual. Really, really, really talented guy. Who are we talking about again? John David Washington, Denzel oh. Washington's son. So it looks like whichever harp you have equipped to Edward is mm -hmm. the type of song he does. This is cool. So look right. So oh. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. Those, those are creepy yeah, looking, right? Looking. Oh, my. You know, you know what they remind me of? Uh, again, Harry Potter fans. Uh, Dementors. Oh. Uh, I was thinking uh, they remind me of the um, the some of the monsters from The Witcher. You have the the the, moon, right. the noon, noon race. Man, that'd be a good one to yeah. play, huh? The Witcher uh, series. That's so long. Yeah. <laughs> I, never played, I never played one or two. So I came in at three, which is a fine place to come in. Right. Um, especially okay. So sorry. Here's what I'm gonna say is, just looking at game design, they they teased me. So when I came up on this ladder, I got that chest and it came down. I can't see all the wall all the way to the left. It's cut off by the screen. So I'm thinking, oh, uh -huh. well, if there's a room over there, and a pathway to it, there's something there for me. Dang it. But yeah, there wasn't. And um. The effect on me is okay. I mean, I want to explore, but now I know I won't always be rewarded for exploring. And some, so do I explore for explore, exploration's sake? Do I stop exploring because I don't want to waste my time and have to get to another battle when I'm trying to save my health and save my magic? But there always there could be, there could be a treasure chest over there. You don't know. It could be the one thing you need. You know to. For your battle, of course, if you have, a, if you were relying on one more treasure chest to beat a battle, you're not doing it right. I think you got well, a problem. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not level <laughs> up your skill uh, set required because um, you need more than that. Where is okay? There are two now. There are two staircases in this room. I think one goes up and one goes down. I think the up one will uh, take me out so I can save. I'm not doing. I'm not doing poorly here. 
kind of got a good rhythm. Let him take care of the mm -hmm. monster. Cecil and Riddy are my my powerhouses right now. Um, and yet, yeah, these enemies aren't doing much damage. Come on, give me a critical. Come on. A basilisk. It, it doesn't. Even, what? It just looks like a like a. a Four-legged creature with a like horn, a <laughs> like a, it looks like a rhino with really, really long legs. Ew. Gross. Oh, here we go. That's some good eating, though, pal. There you go. All right. All right. Uh, I have to pee, and I'll be right back. What? No, let's just stop right here. <laughs> what? What? We're almost at the ant line. We'll We're almost time. there. I've been playing for an hour. I got. I got have you? Let me see. Pee. Two hour, yeah, we're at two hours, ten minutes. It's almost your six o'clock. Uh, are you going to be catching the electron launch tonight? At well, it's at never mind. It's at your twelve thirty, my nine thirty. The what? Uh, New Zealand space uh, space program, uh, 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 rocket oh, lab. You might know that, dude. The uh, so there was they were supposed to launch uh, two days ago, and it was unfortunately scrubbed due to high winds. But that. New Zealand sunset at 9.30, 10 o'clock at night was so cool. I cannot wait to cover it tonight and talk about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, what are you guys getting up to this weekend? Uh, this weekend um, is us social distancing and staying at home and um, mm -hmm. having family over. So, All right on. But uh, gardening, taking care, of, taking care of the lawn in the backyard. Um, so some planting, maybe a little bit of harvesting, but yeah, mostly walking the dog a little bit. So um, that's all for this week on my playthrough, though. I've done enough damage, and I think next episode we'll be able to finally <laughs> get to the end. <laughs> maybe go see what Rose is up to. Maybe she can join the party. That would be really nice. That's right. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice to get the story along with it. <laughs> <You know. laughs> but we're moving at a good clip. You know, I feel like we're getting through. Again, we're not grinding it. I don't remember. Not you know, I thought that it would took longer when I was younger because I thought maybe we were grinding more, but I'm not grinding as much. The battles come naturally, you know. You level up through them, so I think it's working out okay. Yeah, man, it's uh, grinding is such an important part of any RPG, whether online or not, because the only only way to really dominate is to spend. If, even even games like uh, The Last of Us or uh, all the skate games, skate one, two, three, you know, I have to learn the mechanics of how to do the tricks. And, and, and it's really just spending time with it and trying to provide the best version of a playthrough that's easiest on the player while also being difficult. Don't get wrong, you can level up to level 99 and just demolish, but how, you know, the, what, what, el what challenge? Yep. What challenges right, that present? That, yeah, we do want to look through at how challenging the game was then and how it is or is not challenging now. So that's all I have time for this week, Nate. Absolutely. Uh, you got to get going. Uh, th this has been another episode of... Me. Give. Controller. The. And I've, I've been Nate. You've been great. You can find me on all the socials, uh, Thinks and Drinks, Nerd and Learning, give me the controller. And Matt, where can people find you? I, can't. I live in a cave. <laughs> well, sure, you, got, you have socials, right? You have things you want to plug, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> you can find me through the links provided on Thinks and Drinks and give me the controller and Nerd and Learning. All right, absolutely, we'll do that. And you folks, be safe this weekend and Bye, take everyone. care. Bye, Nate. Much love, champ.